<laughs> so, um, James is just eating some leftovers from yesterday because he hasn't been feeling well. I'm having hot lemon and honey and we're going to talk about these movies because June apparently is LBG... I don't know what all the... <laughs> <laughs> don't bother memorizing don't because it'll be a bigger acronym next year. So. Yeah. Anyway. So. It should just come with up with an alternate, you know, uh, all-encompassing yeah. thing. Because otherwise it's just, uh, like, it gets people annoyed. Because yeah. we can't remember it. But, no, it's just, um. It's uh, basically a game of uh, sexual how Sexual much... Liberation Month or something. Or yeah, something like that. Just yeah. Well, it would the whole designation for the whole thing is like multi-gender or something like that. Sure. Call it that. Instead of just, it's ridiculous. Anyway, so, um, but anyway, that happens this month, June, apparently. I don't know why. Maybe because it's a good month, sunny month for parades. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Anyway. Maybe a lot of rainbows or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. There's more rain in June and rainbows? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. But for in, for some reason, June. So, it's June, and so we'll, we'll talk about these things. Um, the first one, Honey Glue, is... Um, there's this guy who's... Mm, maybe, maybe slightly feminine. He's... Um, at the beginning of the show, he's... Um, transvestite and he looks quite nice as a she and he looks quite nice as a he too when he's not dressing up so um, he ends up dating this woman and they have this romance and it's they're actually quite um, childlike the both of them and it's sad because she ends up dying young and she's she acts younger than her age anyway I don't know maybe the story is really about 13 year olds or something because and they just had older people acting in it I don't know but um, anyway the movie was not good and um, it's not worth watching now this one is the queer core how to punk a revolution and I guess what the point was is, um, and I didn't realize this, but apparently punk, the punk movement was um, homophobic? It's hard to uh, characterize it. The first time I ever heard about skinheads, it was understood. This would have been about that's seven. That's skinheads, seven. though, but that's not, I mean... Well, that's just... kind of like the beginning of punk, so it was even before... Uh, the Sex Pistols. When was that? 76 or 77? Uh, so it would be about 70, 71. You know, it was guys with short hair stomping around, ugly pants and so on and so forth. So I, they tended to listen to uh, Jamaican music and that headed over into punk. I don't have to tell you that that was one of the things they did was they did Jamaican music. So it's kind of like been that punk has been kind of like back and forth. Uh, you know, the Sex Pistols were all about the money, really. When you get down to it, uh, they were a brain child, brain question mark, brain dead child, a, a uh, entrepreneur, right? He's into he had a little uh, clothing shop or something like that. Not so, uh, and but they tended to be uh, in England at least uh, left wing. After, left wing to, after that, and uh, so you get uh, Billy Joe. Is that the guy with Green Day? I think he's a left winger. Yeah, that would be the revival one in the mid '90s, '95, somewhere around there. Well, I don't know. I guess I don't know much about the punk movement. I just I don't like punk music, or it just seems really dumb and superficial. And here's what I'll say. Uh, you know, there seems to be this idea. It's an ideal to be the world's gra best garage band. The world's best garage band were the Beatles, maybe, or the Rolling Stones. The Beatles spent, like, 
what, six hours a day on stage, eight hours a day on stage with the help of a lot of amphetamines and youthful exuberance. And they were kind of learning their craft. You cannot do stuff that's really interesting without, uh, oh yeah, wood shedding. You just can't. You know, there's there's no royal road or easy road to, uh, to um, talent. And you can get on stage and you know, show off your lack of talent. But I reserve the right in that situation not to be impressed. So, you know, if if, uh, if people can't keep the beat, how am I supposed to use move my uh, gluteal maximi to that? I can't, I can't. Why am I... I don't really feel the need to tap my feet. The actual need. It's not a... It's not an intellectual thing with me. It's if they can't keep the beat. If they can't keep the time with each other. I'm going, well, you know, like it just doesn't work. So just, probiotic and okay. omega-3 oil to take with your stuff. So some punk guys uh, did okay, you know, despite mm -hmm. their manifest and many lim limitations. But uh, some punk gals did, right? Joan Jett's uh, started off that way, kind of, sort of, and uh, she was okay, you know. So, not All the right. greatest. Okay. Well, Antonio Lopez, 1970, sex fa fashion and disco. So I wouldn't recommend this one either, would you? No, unless you're looking for the occasional... Uh, Penis shot. There were yeah. more than the occasional, and it was... Uh, the there was a very... Penises um, were kind of excited. Yes. So, uh, you know, a state, in the state of, Velikovsky put it, of obscene uh, excitement. That's how he described one Egyptian god. Mm -hmm. the, the general, he should have used the general uh, term, which was a uh, scientific term, which is the ithyphallic men or something like that. All right, so sex, fashion, and disco. And I hadn't heard of this Antonio Lopez until mm. this. Mm -hmm. But um, honestly, he his art was pretty nice. He um, was pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, He was, could have been better than almost any other, uh, any serious artist of the 70s. Now, the 70s was... a. Uh, pretty well a dead era for art. It was a hangover era after the 60s. You know, people you know, just went out on a limb in the 60s and then they decided to drop off the limb in the 70s. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I did like his art. Um, and I don't think that he was an interesting enough person, really, to make a 90-minute documentary about that's what the problem was. So yeah. um, I would like to see a collection of his art in a book, say, to, mm. or a magazine, just to flip through. And um, his life was boring. But his life was boring. I mean, a lot of it's funny because a lot of people think, oh, the life of like one person was saying, we'd spend five hours getting ready to go out, and then we'd go out and dance, you know. And oh wow, how exciting is that? Was that like, eight hours of uh, boredom? Yeah. yeah so. Like honestly. Um, open a book. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> what make yourself a waste interesting. of time. I remember I had a friend and she um, she was a makeup queen. <laughs> and she when she was done, wow, that was a work of art, I had to say. And she did a great job with it. And, you know, the worst thing, if I'd ask her, okay, well, when, when do you want to meet somewhere? That was the best. Because if we met somewhere, that would be a time and she would be there. You know, I'd, she'd pick what time and she knew how long it took her to get dolled up. And um, and so that was fine. But if she said, well, why don't you just come over and then we'll go out when I'm ready? Mm. No, nope, that was not a good time. Because no, then you, you'd spend it an hour over there took longer? so long for her mm. to put her face on and all that. Mm. And um, so, yeah, I, I have to admit when I was a young, I guess, 20-year-old or 20 to 23 maybe, I'd go, I was living in Calgary, and I'd go to the, um, there was, well, I'd go to different gay bars and stuff with friends, but I found that, um, like, the one big gay bar that was humongous, Boys Town, uh, it was very popular, and you had to have a membership to get in, which, I mean, basically, it, it allowed them the right to discriminate, um, because, well, you don't want any trouble in a, in a gay bar, for one thing. You don't want a whole bunch of cowboys coming in and crashing the place, right? Especially Calgary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, but for another, they didn't want, they really didn't want women in there. So, um, the, I had friends that were members and they'd bring me in. 
and but I was not really welcome there by very many of the people. So they were um, kind of uh, catty with you? Yes. That's terrible. Yeah. Which is sad because I was totally supportive. supportive. <laughs> I didn't want to steal their men or anything like mm. that. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'd, my favorite place, it turned out, um, was this, I, I didn't even know if it was really a, a place at first. My friend and I, we went to it and it was listed as a transvestite bar but it just it was at the bottom of a best western hotel it was just a tiny little lounge and to call it a lounge even was a bit of a stretch um it did have a pool table in it i think i think one maybe two but i think one pool table was um it, it was used? not yeah oh, um, like but, for actual pool and not yes okay it was very classy yeah. and so going there at first not sure if it really was as advertised but then yes it was and the woman who ran the place she used to be um she used to be a man but uh she had uh, uh reassignment surgery and wow she was so beautiful and uh I think she was Vietnamese or something and so she had a really tiny build and honestly I could never just looking at how she was built how beautiful she was I I could not picture her as a man I don't think that would have worked out and so it's a lucky thing probably she felt much better as a woman and she certainly seemed very comfortable in her skin but I didn't okay. see her before right so I don't know I yeah But yeah, that was, um, now that place, I think it was called the Midnight Cafe, but it was um, very welcoming for everybody. They made us feel welcome, my friends and I, and we weren't dressed up. I mean, I- The occasional curious cowboy welcome? Sure, they would have, nobody would have even known. A cowboy no. wandering in there wouldn't have known. I mean, there was, occasionally you'd notice like, um, a, really thick five o'clock shadow huge six foot five man in a dress or something but totally welcome you know even if you weren't like if, even if you hadn't spent six hours doing your hair and makeup and costume and the whole you were still welcome and what a wonderful place that was mm, that's good yeah so um anyway but um for the most part though I um I don't really understand people who spend a lot of time on their exterior like on their makeup and their hair and whether they're women or men or whatever um it I don't really understand that and I can't I couldn't possibly spend a lot of time with a person who focused on that because I mean you really you get bored after all yeah it's pretty good um they're interesting to maybe go out with and have a few drinks or whatever. But past that, I mean, what are you going to talk about? Um, because they haven't been working on their inside. And they're just bettering. And that's just temporary. Every time you pretty up your outside, well, that'll last for a little while. And you have to touch it up or whatever. But, um, but if you better your inside, then that lasts probably forever. Unless you get Alzheimer's or something. So, anyway, but, so that's it. I just found these, these people really quite boring. Even though the, um, uh, the, the main man, Antonio Lopez, and his, um, I can't remember, what was his boyfriend's Juan, name? something or other. I can't remember. And he hung with a guy called Carlos Moro. Yeah. Well, um, this Antonio, he was very, like, he did have a steady boyfriend, but he was, it was a very open relationship, and... So open that uh, when I, they seemed to start the narrative off in 67, 68, and then go, this is so boring, let me guess how he dies, early, in the early 80s, yes. from AIDS. So, yeah, and of course that's the way it worked out. You just knew, you can yeah. see the title there, what is it? Uh, Fashion, disco, and sex, right? 
and uh, the like disco uh, lifestyle was really a death style, you know, like uh, all that stupid partying around and stuff like that. It ended up with so many people dying of AIDS in the early 80s and later on. So it was uh, ridiculous. Yeah, um, but anyway, I had someone James who tried to rope me into that uh, oh. st style, not so much the lifestyle, but into disco. It's people, I had people laughing at me. Years afterwards, uh, decades afterwards, and uh, I'm going. Ah, I was just trying to be accommodating. It certainly yeah. wasn't something that I, I would have gotten into on my own initially. Yeah, but I don't know. Both James and I felt like they, the people that were interviewed for the documentary, and they really pussyfoot around the whole. Um, about the whole AIDS issue and how, um, like, a lot of the people in interviewing were saying, well, back then, you know, there was no AIDS and we didn't have to worry about da-da-da-da-da-da. And it's like, no, that's a lie. I mean, obviously, um, AIDS swept through a whole bunch of people yeah. we at don't once. We know how long but, it was at work. Yeah, and... There, they had, there were other diseases. We've known about sexually transmitted diseases for how long? Long, long, long time. Hmm. So, like, um, that's various... why, to a certain extent, their uh, societies tend to have social strictures on these things. There are other things, uh, like uh, who's responsible for uh, children and things like that. But. Uh... <coughs> <coughs> It's uh, just uh, like, uh, you, you know, what is it? The Who once say. It was about 1974, 75. There ain't no easy way to be free. And uh, it's true, you know. There ain't no easy way to be free. So all bunches of people. Joni Mitchell's a classic example. David Crosby's another in the late 60s and early 70s we were singing about that four letter word F, F word free 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 there ain't no free lunch you know there's nothing comes free nothing comes easy you can try for something like freedom but you just can't go out and be making things up uh, kind of like uh, it's, it's if you just just like improvising Impro the best improvisation jazz people they do all sorts of preparation for the improvisation. Uh, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, the so-called improvisation from the... Uh, no, well, just learning these. to play the instruments in the of first course. place. You've got to learn your scales. Yeah. you got to learn... Uh, you got to learn a bunch of... Like if you're playing guitar, you got to learn huge numbers of chords and uh, things like that. And then you got to be able to do it, not at really command, but uh, the way you feel. So uh, there's got to be some sort of preparation. So just going off and doing whatever you feel like is uh, kind of not a good idea. I'm right now <laughs> I'm reading a little bit of a biography of Jim Morrison, and it's amazing. You know, they're using the word free, 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 free. Yeah, he ended up dying at age 27, and uh, you know, you can only drink so much alcohol, you can use so much cocaine before you. He crashed and he did and he got depressed and committed suicide and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, he committed suicide. But uh, yeah, this was uh, kind of like a downer thing. I always find it a downer when there's someone who's got talent, right? And I wouldn't call it a slim talent or anything like that. Like I say, maybe one of the better artists to come out of the 70s. Uh, he was a commercial artist, but uh, generally our best artists are commercial artists. They're not our best artistic artists, but our artistic artists are even artists. So, what can I say? You yeah. know, they actually be advised if I, to actually take some commercial art, so they actually learn to do real art, and then they'd have the basis for doing artistic art. You can't do artistic art if you don't have the basics. It's like I was talking about. You know, when you're doing, it, when you're a jazz musician, you got to learn scales, you got to learn chords. It's not required in art. 
yeah. at university. You know, yeah. you don't learn that kind of garbage. And they got people doing stuff the public can't stand. You know? Yeah, but, I took a, well, an you know. introductory drawing course at yeah. university, wow. and I didn't learn how to draw a thing. It you know, was really I didn't bad, tell you that you'd be wasted, wasting money because it was a lesson learned. Right. Well, and it wasn't so Jake much. Said not, my art did improve while did, I was taking did, it somehow. I guess yeah. just by. Um, well, you talk things over with me whatever. and uh, stuff know. like that. It, it's partly doing uh, the stuff, thing about a course is it, it uh, gives you an incentive to do stuff. Yeah. Right. But uh, you were working against that idiot. I mean, you are a better artist than Bozo who's teaching it. So. Uh, I don't know. I, have well, no, I didn't look at what her art was like. I just the course I think I've seen stupid. some of it. It's uh, embarrassing. So. Yeah.